Welcome back, everyone. Work on the University of Saskatchewan's EDI strategy and action plan began in the summer of 2019. This work has been informed by extensive consultation with our campus community, and we are preparing to return to our community for more conversation in the coming months. Cheryl Carver, the University of Saskatchewan's Associate Vice President, People and Resources, and Dr. Patty McDougall, Deputy Provost, have shepherded the development of the EDI strategy and action plan from the beginning. A demonstration of their personal and professional commitment to EDI. They were delighted to be joined by Dr. Angela Jaime as she moved into the role of Interim Vice Provost Indigenous Engagement. Angela is an EDI scholar in her own right, as we have just heard. It is my pleasure to welcome Cheryl and Patty and welcome back Angela for our next presentation, which is an update on USASC's EDI strategy and action plan. Welcome. Thank you, Kelly, and good morning, everyone. I'm really pl have a pleasure to be with all of you this morning. Uh, first, I think I'd like to extend a thank you, a huge thank you to our EDI Champion Network for organizing today's event. This is a really exciting day and it's another great opportunity for learning for all of us. Um, what we would like to do today is share with you a quick update on our progress towards the development of the university's EDI strategy and action plan uh, and another important milestone in terms of our EDI work on campus. A bit of background and context for you. Um, the University of Saskatchewan, as you know, aspires to be the university the world needs and has recognized that a greater focus on equity, diversity, inclusion can inspire the university community to better enable excellence, creativity, and innovation across our campus and beyond. We began our dialogue and consultation on the creation of an EDI policy and strategy and action plan several years ago, as Kelly mentioned. And we're moving into the final stages uh, of its development. The approval in 2020 of our university EDI policy, as President Stoichev mentioned, was an important foundational element and it's now in place to support the university community to bring life to the principles of diversity, equality, human dignity, and Manichituan, and reflect them back in our daily interactions and decisions. Now the EDI strategy and action plan will support us as we continue to embed these concepts throughout our campus community and the work that we do uh, day in and day out. It is, I hope though, more than just concepts, more than just words, uh, more than just fluff as Angela referred to. I'm hoping that it is a plan that takes ideas and turns them into measurable, actionable objectives. It's a starting point for our community to use and create a shared understanding of our EDI objectives and align that across our campus community. And go to the next slide, Kelly. Spearheaded by an EDI working group made up of key stakeholders from across our campus, the university has engaged in an extensive reflection research analysis to advance our commitment to EDI and to develop this strategy and action plan. The consultations to date have included surveys, interviews, focus groups, workshops um, with over 150 faculty, staff and students, as well as extensive dialogue with our EDI working group an advisory committee that we set up and the members of our champion network uh, who you see in action today. The feedback and the guidance that we have collected in this consultation, I think has given us wide ranging perspectives on our needs as we go forward. And it's been invaluable in terms of developing our draft strategy and action plan. With this initial draft uh, in hand, we're now in a, uh, in a new place. Um, the working group has recognized that we have an opportunity to strengthen the narrative and the vision for EDI and to clearly articulate the commitments and the future impact that this work will have and to support an implementation phase. We have engaged with a, an organization called Shift Health to build on the substantial and foundational work that we've conducted to date and hopefully to advance this EDI strategy and action plan to completion. I wanna share with you sort of the next steps, immediate next steps, uh, so you have an awareness. At a high level, this is what is planned for the next coming months. Through September and October, um, we have engaged in a conversation with some key stakeholders to get a final perspective on the vision and narrative for the strategy and to build some consensus around our, our messaging. In October and November, we'll be leveraging all of this work that we've done to date 
to finalize the strategy and action plan and to share it with some key reviewers. And from that point on in November and hopefully December, we will be sharing the strategy and action plan with our campus community and to gain uh, feedback from that broader community. And the final step will be endorsement from our three governing bodies. From there, truly the real work will begin as we then shift our focus to the implementation phase of this work and how we can advance the commitments and strategies um, that are in, in embedded in it. There have been so many people that have been involved in contributing to this conversation over the last number of years, and I cannot thank them enough for pouring their heart and soul into this work and helping to advance this strategy. It has been long overdue, and we know that wherever we land, we'll continue to uh, inform and update the strategy based on new ideas from champions across our campus and from those that we will learn from outside of our campus community. This is the case, I think, in many universities deeply committed to the EDI. And we have many good practices and pockets of positive initiatives that we can build on it with this strategy. We are confident that the strategy and action plan that we've built on will capture uh, the initiatives that currently exist and the pockets of activity and that we will move in the direction of true inclusion. We don't want to be dependent on the goodwill and legwork of a few enthusiastic individuals uh, who may burn out and feel unsupported in the context of the work that they're doing. We want to make real change and see real accountability from everyone within our community. Hopefully we can uh, achieve that success uh, and, and, and see true inclusion as part of our everyday life. That the strategy will be bold in its actions and ambitions. Along this journey, I have worked in partnership with people from uh, Indigenous engagement and our academic community, people I think who have been mentioned in this presentation already, but myself, Jackie Ottman and, and Catherine Trask formed a steering committee that was guiding this work. I really want to thank both of them for their amazing contributions to the dialogue and discussion. At times that has been challenging and the journey has had a few bumps along the way. And we've had some really difficult conversations as we've moved through this work. With their departure, um, I, we will have some new energy, new ideas, and new enthusiasm that's going to be added to the conversation as Angela and Patty uh, take a role in helping guide us through the final stages of this implementation. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to them uh, to maybe share some of their insights uh, as we focus on moving this work forward. One of the things that, that the Office of Vice Provost Indigenous Engagement would like to uh, to reemphasize is that this policy will walk hand in hand with the anti-racist, anti-oppression policy that we're working on currently, as well as Opahutan, the Indigenous strategy that has been gifted to the university as of August 2021. So we will be working diligently to make sure that these uh, various policies and strategies that are, the university is engaging in are working in concert with each other as opposed to in silos. And that's something that I've been very vocal about and has um, been received by a lot of support by both Cheryl, Patty, and the entire committee is finding ways to understand how they all work together, how uh, we are creating these, these policies and strategies to have a better university, to have a better place for all of us to be. And to challenge it, and the other, and the last thing that I'll say is that um, that no policy, no strategy lives um, in stone. It is uh, an ever changing, shifting kind of uh, mentality because we don't live in a vacuum, right? We we need to keep thinking about how to make it better, how to make sure it's inclusive for everyone, and and take the feedback that our communities are going to give us and incorporate that in uh, to the ways in which we're doing things. Thanks, Angela. I think I would just want to echo, echo some of the words that have been shared. And I think that, um, you know, as, as Cheryl pointed out, this has taken us some time. We were in great hands with Jackie and Catherine, and they took us uh, ways forward, um, the help of all of the people that have participated thus far 
took us a ways forward. Whenever things are um, slow in movement, um, I always have to pause and reflect on what does that mean for us? What, what might be going on and why, why is this taking us some time? And I think quite clearly in this case, it's taking us some time. The work might be challenging. The conversations might be difficult. It's taking us some time because the outcome and the product and the, and, and the action plan uh, that we come out with at the end will be something that we feel we can all continue to work with and continue to evolve as, as Angela spoke about. My, my goals in all of this will be um, to make sure that what we put into that strategy, into that action plan will be the kinds of things that we can weave into our everyday work, into our strategic work, and maybe most importantly, into the way that we think. So, so my hope for us will be that we will, over a period of time, we will think EDI. Um, we will think indigenization. Uh, we will think decolonization, right, in ways that we have been uh, attempting to shift and attempting to, um, to advance forward. So I'm excited about, about this work and this opportunity and this happening uh, for us now. And you can be sure, as Cheryl said, in terms of the, bold, the boldness, um, we always look for, for things that, that are easy wins that we know won't be overly challenging for us to make change, but we're also looking for big moves this time around. We're looking for bold moves. And just as Angela pointed to a couple of the critical policy work that intersects, I think it, it, you know, it should also be said that this will intersect, the work that we're doing in, in, in this space will intersect with our learning, teaching and student experience strategy, our international blueprint, our learning charter. All of those things inspire and come together in, in a way that I think will ultimately make it so that we're not doing EDI off the side of our desk. We're not all trying to figure out what the words mean, what the vocabulary means, but rather we have a common vocabulary. We have a common language. And that language, quite frankly, is gonna change our thinking. It's gonna change the lens that we take in our everyday work. And, and I'm excited to be part of that. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who is committed to spend time thinking about these issues today and sharing wisdom and experience. Thank you. Patty, and thank you, Angela, um, for your comments and for your support going forward in terms of the next phases of this work. Um, and just as a reminder, I'll close by, by telling people what you can expect to see in terms of the EDI strategy and action plan. Um, as I said, we're hoping to launch it uh, in November. Um, we're going to see a strategy document that I think will set some context that will describe a clear mission, vision, and strategic intent of, of um, our EDI strategy. Mm -hmm. It'll have some core commitments and priorities and it will serve uh, to have guideposts uh, that we can um, work towards and report on going forward. Uh, the action plan I think will hopefully also uh, beyond setting a, a broad strategy and aspirations, will identify some key priorities and actions, uh, focus on things like accountability and responsibility, uh, timelines and deadlines, and I think hopefully be something that we can all contribute to as we continue to add to these strategies going forward. I'm excited about the launch of this. Uh, it's been a long time coming, as I said, a lot of people have contributed to the conversation and people will continue to contribute to that conversation going forward. Uh, I look forward to getting your questions, your feedback, uh, continuing to build momentum for this work and continuing to, to build alignment as we think about all the elements uh, that have to intersect and work collectively together across the institution from our indigenous strategy uh, to our living our values uh, policy, uh, as well as our EDI policy and strategy. Thank you very much. Uh, and we look forward to working with you uh, in the coming days. Thank you so much to Cheryl and Patty and Angela for the update on um, the University of Saskatchewan's EDI strategy and action plan. Um, I think, you know, Patty, you made a comment about, about language and um, how we need a common vocabulary. And I firmly believe that words are worlds and um, we should not underestimate the power of, of language and understanding and sharing um, a common vocabulary. So thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to, to next steps and to engaging in more conversation with our campus community.